This lecture is specific to honors physics AB and AP physics C. In this lecture, we take a look at what is called the simple pendulum. Let me go ahead and take this pendulum and set it into oscillation. Going as far back as conservation of energy, our unit on conservation of energy, we examined a simple pendulum as a means of visualizing conservation of energy. What I never went through, however, at the time, was a description of how F equals MA gives us an oscillation, nor did I describe, for example, the kinematics of this oscillation. That's what we want to do here. We want to examine the dynamics now of a simple pendulum. Okay, let me go ahead and tilt the phone back towards the board. Like so, let me move it upwards as well. Like so. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna apply F equals MA to the simple pendulum and show in fact that it is a simple harmonic oscillator. Now let's recall the following expression for the mass attached to a spring. What I've written down is the differential equation for a simple harmonic oscillator, that is, Negative constants multiplied by position is equal to the second derivative of position with respect to time. Whenever you see a differential equation that looks like that, it means that the object is a simple harmonic oscillator where the angular frequency of the oscillation is always the square root of the constants that appears here in the expression in front of the position. When I apply F equals MA to the simple pendulum, I wanna show that it gives us the exact same differential equation. Therefore, a simple pendulum is a simple harmonic oscillator. The only thing that will be different, however, are the constants that appear here in front of the position. Okay, here's then how we set up this situation for the simple pendulum. So here's the pendulum itself of mass M and length L. Okay, let's say that this is the vertical direction and then down here at the bottom of the swing, let's think of that as the equilibrium position. Okay, and then along a circular arc, the object oscillates, where right here, by definition, is the displacement away from equilibrium, and we'll think of it as a positive number. Right here is the angle that is made by the string with respect to the vertical direction, and now we apply F equals MA. There are only two forces being exerted upon the pendulum, just like it was for the conical pendulum back in the first semester, and that is the tension and the force of gravity. So right here is the tension vector, like so, and then right here is the force of gravity, mg. Now in this case for the simple pendulum, we do not break up the tension vector into components. Instead, we break up the mg vector into components, and we do so in the following way. Here and here, where from the geometry, this angle here pretty obviously is the angle theta. And now take a look at this component of mg specifically mg sine theta. Notice that mg sine theta acts like the spring force in the sense that it's a restoring force. That is, it's trying to bring the pendulum back to the equilibrium position. So when I examine now F equals ma, we're only going to look in this direction that is tangential to the circular arc. It is this component here, mg sine theta, that gives us a tangential acceleration. We're not concerned with what happens here in the radial direction. In the radial direction, there is a centripetal acceleration, but it's perpendicular to the tangential acceleration, which is the one that's important when describing an oscillation. So here's how we write then mg, or excuse me, F equals ma, in this direction, that is, that is tangential to the circular arc. So I only have that one component there of mg, and that's mg sine theta and we'll then write it as F equals MA in the following way. Where the acceleration on the right-hand side of the expression is the tangential acceleration that is along this circular arc. Notice the negative sign. The reason why I gave MG sine theta a negative sign is because it points in the direction opposite of what we thought of as positive. By definition, you think of the displacement away from equilibrium as a positive number. MG sine theta is a restoring force Therefore, we think of it as a negative number, just like we do for the spring force. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel out the mass m. And let's write the tangential acceleration as the second derivative of position with respect to time. Like so. And now take a look at this differential equation. Does this differential equation look like this differential equation here? No. This differential equation is in terms of position, whereas this right here is in terms of angle. 
So I have to do a couple of extra steps. Here are those steps. Just like we did for the conical pendulum, here now for the simple pendulum, I'm going to use a small angle approximation. Now in the small angle approximation, recall that the sine of the angle, the tangent of the angle, and the angle itself are about the same thing. I did this in a separate lecture, but what I did in that lecture for the conical pendulum was I chose a small angle, say 15 degrees, and then I converted it into radians, and then in radian mode on my calculator, I found the sine and tangent of that angle, and all three of these numbers ended up being about the same thing as long as the angle is small. That's the small angle approximation. We're going to apply it here as well. Specifically here, what we're gonna do is replace the sine of theta with just theta, like so. And now I'll write the angle theta in terms of the displacement x. Here's how we do so. The angle theta is equal to the arc length on a circle, x, divided by the radius of that circle, which is the length of the pendulum, l. So let's go ahead and replace theta with x over l. When we do, we obtain the following differential equation. This expression right here. Notice that this expression looks exactly like this expression in the following sense. Negative constants times position is equal to the second derivative of position with respect to time. Therefore, a simple pendulum is an SHO. It's a simple harmonic oscillator. The only difference between this situation and the mass attached to the spring is the angular frequency. For the mass attached to the spring, the angular frequency is the square root of k over m. Here in this case, it's the square root of g over l. That is like so. Okay, now let's examine this expression a little bit more carefully. I'll demonstrate it to you as well because we actually have seen this expression before. Okay, let me do this on the lower board. Just like I did in an earlier lecture, let's not describe the angular frequency omega, but instead let's describe the period. The period, capital T, is 2 pi divided by omega. So take this expression for omega and plug it into the denominator of the expression, and we end up with this expression here for the period. The period of the oscillation only depends upon the length of the string L. It does not depend upon the amplitude, for example, just like it doesn't for a mass attached to a spring. So then therefore, if we wanted to, we could use a pendulum as a clock. In, in fact, the first accurate mechanical clocks that were constructed in the 17th, 17th century were in fact pendulum clocks. But let me now go ahead and demonstrate this formula for you. So let me retilt my phone again. Okay, like so, bear with me as I do. Let me tilt it downwards as well. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then we have a length L here associated with the pendulum, thereby giving us a period for the oscillation like so. Once again, the amplitude of the motion doesn't matter. The amplitude is important when talking about the total energy of the pendulum. So for example, if I have a small amplitude like so, I then measure the period with a stopwatch and I get some number, but the amount of energy that's present here is small. Let me make the amplitude larger, like this, so then therefore more energy is present when I do this. But if I measured the period from here to here, it's exactly the same as the period from here to here, because once again, the amplitude doesn't matter. The only thing that does matter is the length of the string. So if the length of the string L here is large, then the period is large, say like so. If I make the L small like this, notice how much shorter this period is here as opposed to this here. Now, as I said a few minutes ago, we have seen this expression for the period before. We saw it back in our unit on uniform circular motion for the period of a conical pendulum. Recall that a conical pendulum is like so, where the object is moving in a uniform circular motion like this in a circle that is parallel to the ground. 
The period of the uh, revolution, however, for a conical pendulum is exactly the same as it is for a simple pendulum. Remember that mathematically there's really no difference between uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion, like so, is just one component of the two-dimensional uniform circular motion. In both cases, for the conical pendulum and the simple pendulum, in both cases there are the same two forces acting tension from the string and the force of gravity. So then therefore, because the forces are the same in both of these situations, the period should be the same, and it is. Okay, let me go ahead and reposition my phone back to the board. Like so. Okay, let me position the phone upwards. There we go, like so. And now let's go ahead and complete our description here of the kinematics of a simple harmonic oscillator. Specifically in this case, however, the simple pendulum. So on the top board, for example, we can describe the position along that circular arc as a function of time as an A cosine omega t function, just like we do for a mass attached to a spring. The only difference is the value of omega, the angular frequency, it's the square root of g over l. That is the angular frequency of the oscillation itself. When describing, however, the simple pendulum, we usually don't bother to describe the position x as a function of time. Instead, what we usually describe is the angle theta on the diagram above as a function of time. So let me make an adjustment here in the following way. Okay, recall from the top board that angle is equal to position divided by the length L. So let's go ahead and rewrite the position here and here as L times theta. So here on the left-hand side, L times the angle as a function of time. And then here on the right-hand side, the amplitude, the maximum value of the displacement X, well, we'll think of that amplitude as a maximum angle multiplied by the length L. The maximum angle is sometimes called the amplitude angle. It's usually referred to as theta naught for that reason. So theta naught is called the amplitude angle. And then notice in the expression that the length L here cancels out. So then therefore the angle that is made by the string as a function of time is the following expression like so. That's really the only difference in describing the kinematics of a simple pendulum as opposed to that of a mass attached to a spring. In this case, we usually describe the angle here as a function of time. Okay, we'll take a look at one example in just a moment, but before we do, let's go back briefly to this expression here. This expression here truly is the differential equation for a pendulum before you make the small angle approximation. So if I have the pendulum, for example, let me just grab it by hand. If I have the pendulum oscillate, for example, say like so, in this particular case, I cannot use, legitimately, I cannot use the small angle approximation. So in that case, this truly is right here, the differential equation that describes such a situation. What is the solution to this much more complicated differential equation? It's something called a Taylor series, for those of you that have seen Taylor series already in calculus class. Besides that, however, let's just go ahead and take a look at a basic example of the simple pendulum. Okay, I'm going to do some erasing here. Okay, so I have this phrased as a problem. Go ahead and copy this problem down into your notes. Okay, so a simple pendulum has a length of 2 meters. So L is equal to 2 meters. Okay, the initial angle is 15 degrees. That's the amplitude angle. So theta naught is equal to 15 degrees. Okay, part A, calculate the angular frequency in the period. Easy enough. Okay, so the angular frequency is the square root of g over L. We'll end up with something in terms of radians per second. So I have here the square root of g over L, so 9.8 divided by 2 meters. Take the square root of that. It comes out to be about 2.21 radians per second. Okay, the period from that is 2 pi divided by omega. So 2 times pi and then divided by that. This comes out to be about 2.84 seconds. Okay, just be a little bit careful later on when you review. These two numbers are pretty similar to each other, but this right here is angular frequency of the oscillation. 
This right here is the period of the oscillation. Okay, very simple enough. That's part B of the problem. Okay, let me move the file. Okay, now in part B of the example, it says write the equation for the angular position as a function of time. Okay, so the angular position as a function of time is 15 degrees times the cosine then of 2.21 times the time t. So it's cosine of omega t, of course. Omega, remember, we just calculated a few moments ago to be 2.21 radians per second. So this right here is describing the angular position as a function of time, the angular position of the string with respect to the vertical direction. Okay, and then in part C, when does the string make an angle of plus or minus 10 degrees with respect to the vertical direction? We're actually going to calculate here four times. We're going to calculate a time, for example, when the angle is 10 degrees on one side of the oscillation and times on the other side when the angle is 10 degrees, that is, on the other side of the equilibrium position. So depending upon how a problem like this is phrased, in this particular case, we actually have to calculate four times. Okay, let's do so here in the following way. Okay, let's erase all of this from earlier. Okay, so visualize it like this. So here's our equilibrium position like so. And then right here we'll say is a positive 10 degree angle. And then on the other side of the swing like this, let's say that right here is a negative 10 degree angle. So it's going to be at these two different angles for a total of four times in one period. So if you start here at 15 degrees, it goes 10 degrees, negative 10 degrees, negative 10 degrees, 10 degrees, and then back up to the starting position like that. So there are ultimately four times that we have to calculate here. So let's go ahead and find the positive value first. So 10 degrees equals 15 degrees, cosine of 2.21 times t. So then therefore, I'm just going to go ahead and solve for t. Do I have to be in radian mode or degree mode on my calculator? Radian mode. And the reason for that is because this right here is an angle in radians that's describing an oscillation. This right here is the physical angle that you actually see of the string with respect to the vertical direction. So be a little bit careful about what angle is what angle. This is the actual physical angle that you see. This right here is describing an angle in terms of the oscillation, which is in radians. So you still have to be in radian mode on your calculator for that reason. Okay, so let's go ahead and do 10 divided by 15 and then take the inverse cosine of both sides. Like so. And then I'll just run through the algebra here to solve for time. Okay, so inverse cosine of 10 over 15 and then divide by 2.21. And my first time here, call it T1, ends up being about 0.38 seconds. To help us find the other time, let's just go ahead and graph this out. So this is just a kinematics graph, in this case describing the physical angle theta as a function of time, and then here's our cosine curve like so. Okay, what I've drawn here is one full oscillation, so here's the period of 2.84 seconds. Okay, right here is positive 15 degrees, down here is negative 15 degrees, and then for positive 10 degrees thus far, here's then what we've calculated. Let's say that right here is plus 10. So then therefore we have these two points like so. Obviously I found the first point here, T1, to be 0.38 seconds. Okay, and then by symmetry, we can go ahead and find the second time. In order to do so, just take 2.84 and subtract from it 0.38. So let's call that T2. So T2 equals 2.84 minus 0.38. Let's go ahead and obtain that number. Okay, so 2.84 minus 0.38, and that works out to be 2.46 seconds. Like so. Okay, and then we'll do the math once again, but in this case, what we're going to do is come down here and find the two times at negative 10 degrees. Like so, I'll call them, say, T3 and T4. So let me go ahead and do some erasing to find those two times. Okay, so now we go negative 10 degrees equals 15 degrees cosine of 2.21t and then we just solve for t. All right, so let me go ahead and do so. So I'm gonna do inverse cosine of negative 10 over 15. Just be careful with the negative sign. Divide by 2.21. Okay, and I get this time here, call it t3, 1.04 seconds. That's pretty obviously this point right here. 
And then the other point, call it T4, I'll just take the 1.04 seconds that we just found and subtract it from the period of 2.84 seconds. So 2.84 minus 1.04, let me just do the math here. And that comes out to be 1.8 seconds. That's obviously this point right here. So the kinematics here of a simple pendulum is obviously pretty simple and straightforward.